Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back. So the last speaker of this session uh, is uh, Dr. Tong Yang Li. Uh, Dr. Li is currently assistant professor at the Center of Frontier of Computing Study, Peking University. Previously, he was a postdoc assistant associate at the Center for Theoretical Com uh, Physics, MIT. He received his master degree and PhD degree both from the Department of Computer Science, University of Maryland in 2018 and 2020, respectively. He received his bachelor degree of engineering from the IIIS Tsinghua University and a bachelor degree of science from the Department of Mathematical Science, Tsinghua University, both in 2015. Tongyang uh, was a uh, recipient of the RBM PhD Fellowship, the NSF QISE Net Triplet Award, and uh, the Lance Source Fellowship. Today, he will talk about the quantum algorithm for <coughs> semi definite programs with applications uh, to machine learning. Let's welcome Dr. Lee. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Sun, for the very nice introduction. Hi, everyone. Today, I'm going to talk about quantum algorithm for semi definite programs with applications to machine learning. So today we are going to focus on such kind of problems. So this is a very typical uh, uh, programming problem. So we are given uh, uh, matrices uh, C, uh, C and AI. So the, the target is that we want to maximize the trace of C times X with a subjection such that um, the trace of each uh, matrix AI times X is at most BI. So all these matrices AI, uh, C, and also the scalars uh, BI are given to you. So for uh, constituting a semi-definite program, we require that the matrix X here to be a positive semi-definite matrix. That is to say, all the eigenvalues of the matrix X is uh, um, non-negative. So such kind of uh, semi-definite programs is a central topic in computer science and actually has a lot of applications. So for instance, in optimization, this is just a very important class of complex optimization problems. And also, in, for instance, in algorithm design, uh, there is this, uh, uh, for instance, good approximation algorithm for max cut, a uh, constant uh, satisfaction uh, problem, the CSP problem, etc. And all this problem just uh, requires to solving uh, such kind of uh, uh, semi-definite programs. And also, uh, it is um, uh, it, the, the semi-definite program is uh, widely applied in operations research, machine learning, etc. So let's zoom in a little bit. So here we have uh, mainly have a few uh, different parameters. So here we assume that the number of constraints is M uh, throughout the talk. And we assume that all these matrices are Hermitian matrices uh, N by N. And also we assume that all the input matrices AI and also the target matrix C are uh, sparse matrix. So uh, we consider such kind of SDP and such kind of problem has been, uh, it is well known uh, the SDP can be stored in polynomial time because it is a special case of convex optimization problem. And I think uh, because of the importance of the topic, uh, 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 experts has, uh, have been really pushing forward to give the best bounds for the problem. And I, I think this, uh, like the classical state of the art problem with pre uh, precision epsilon. So if you really want to have a good epsilon dependence, so the bound is uh, basically uh, can be achieved by the interior point method. So here the gamma is something like uh, capital R times small r over epsilon. And this capital R and small r is just like the upper bounds of the a primal and a dual problem of the problem is, is just like the condition number of the problem. So you see like for uh, using the interior point method, actually uh, we have to say that this bound is not very good. And in particular, uh, the dimension dependence is basically um, around like a uh, uh, third power, uh, so which is um, quite large in general. And there is another method called the matrix multiplicity weight method, uh, whose bound is actually much better in terms of dimension dependence. Uh, but unfortunately, the dependence on the condition number is a little bit large. It's like come up to the seventh power. So it has been a, a very important question about whether in general, so, so all these results about uh, the balance on classical computers. So if we have a quantum computer, a very important question is that uh, speaking of universal quantum algorithm, can that solve uh, SDPs uh, faster than the classical algorithms? So uh, maybe you can find some nice uh, inspiration is um, uh, maybe quantum computers can really help because we know that the linear program is a generalization of linear equations, which can be solved with an exponential quantum spin up by the famous uh, HHL algorithm. I think actually Professor Dong Lingdong's talk uh, mentioned about the HHL algorithm early in this session. 
So these are definitely some inspirations that maybe SDP uh, can be so faster on quantum computers. And actually the answer is yes. And previously there was a work I Brando and swore that can give a, a quantum algorithm with complexity like this, like square root of m times square root of n. So reca recap that the, the m is the number of constraints and n is the, the dimension of the problem. So this constitutes a quadratic speed up in terms of uh, both parameters. And there is a later uh, work by Van Eppard and all that can improve the bound to, to a much uh, reasonable condition number dependence, uh, gamma to the eighth. And unfortunately, it is also shown in the Brando and Swore paper that uh, the quantum algorithm in general cannot give an exponential speed up for so in the SDP. So they show a quantum lower bound in terms of square root of n plus square root of n. So you see that there are still uh, uh, gaps between the, the best known quantum algorithm as corresponding a lower bound. So the upper bound is square root of m times square root of n, uh, and the quantum lower bound is square root of m plus square root of n. So a very natural question here is that whether we can close the gap here. So we gave a affirmative answer to this question, and actually the answer is uh, closer to the uh, to the lower bound here. So basically, we show a quantum algorithm that can solve semi-definite programs uh, with high success probability using roughly like square root of m uh, plus square root of n times the condition number to the fifth power, uh, using uh, this number of quantum gates and queries to the oracles. So what is the oracle that uh, we want to uh, mention here? So it is basically something like this. So uh, I have to say that this is uh, stronger than a class classical assumption because, for instance, if I tell you to solve a, a semi-definite program uh, a problem on a classical computer, so I got to give you like these uh, matrices like AI and also the target matrix C. So here on quantum computers, we assume that we can query for these matrices in superposition. So in the sense that you can query for like different entries of these matrices in superposition. So this is definitely stronger than the classical assumptions but uh, uh, after having such kind of quantum oracles to query for these input matrices, we can give a fast quantum algorithm. And actually, uh, as mentioned here, uh, this is a polynomial speed up compared to the classical bound. So you see like it is actually um, better in all of the parameters. I mean, uh, maybe not the sparsity, but uh, mainly in the dimension dependence and the number of constraints and also the condition number. So I guess there are a lot of technical details in the algorithm, but maybe let me tell you a little bit about the high level intuition for the algorithm. So this algorithm, as well as the classical algorithm using a, a multiplicative weight method, they are actually a very typical, following a typical pattern uh, like the iterative algorithm. So uh, for this uh, semi-definite program, because it is a programming problem, there is going to be uh, some a feasible set P uh, and uh, as well as like a function F that you are going to optimize with. So for the iterative algorithm, you are going to iterate between uh, a number of solutions. So for instance, at step I, you previously you have the solutions like uh, x uh, uh, i minus one to x one, as well as the, the definition of the problem, basically the set P and also the function F here. So we can see that such kind of uh, SDP feasibility testing problem. So here we, uh, uh, we instead of really want to solve an optimization problem, we want to, so, uh, want to determine whether such kind of uh, uh, a problem is feasible or not. By feasible, I mean whether this problem exists a solution or not. So actually, uh, for solving such kind of feasibility problem, you, know, you can actually uh, using this to solve the optimization problem. Because for the optimization problem, it's just like you, you want to do binary search on another uh, uh, constraint here. You just treat the target C as a constraint here. And using the, the binary search, this, this can be done. So in the rest of my talk, I'm going to focus on this kind of SDP feasibility problem. So for the feasibility problem, this uh, falls into the method called the matrix multiplicative weight method. And the idea here is very simple. So in each iteration, you you have like a certain weight matrix. And after having this ma weight matrix, you are going to uh, compute a density matrix, which is the row T here. So the, 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 the second line in this inside this iteration is called the observed again matrix. So in this problem, you because we have such kind of feasibility testing problem, you just want to determine whether this problem is feasible or not. So if there are some set that is not feasible, so for instance, if in some constraint this trace of AI uh, times X is larger than uh, BI plus epsilon, then you, you, you really got a flag here and you want to uh, make sure that this is selected. So you just like uh, select a, a, a constraint that is well related and you just like put in the third line of the problem. So why do we want to uh, do this? Because the constraint is well related and you see like in the third line, this is actually something is going to uh, get, uh, get exponentially small. You have exponential here 
you have like a minus delta here. So if, if something is well related at the current iteration, you want to make the corresponding way to get smaller and smaller to make sure that the, the problem is actually, sorry, the solution is finally going to be uh, feasible. So this is, uh, as a summary, uh, we are just going to test the SDP feasibility by the MMW. And actually, if the solution is already feasible, then you are happy with this and you just return. Yes. And I think finally, uh, we actually uh, set a parameter capital T here. And if the algorithm has been done, has been doing like so many iterations and still like uh, uh, keep uh, iterating, then we probably just end. Uh, and it, we just have to claim that SDP is infeasible because if you always find an inf uh, uh, like uh, you always find a valid constraint and doing for too many iterations, uh, uh, the problem got to be uh, infeasible. So uh, there are definitely going to be some calculations about like what is the threshold T here. And something good for this uh, matrix multiplicative weight uh, framework is that uh, it, it turns out that the, 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 the total number of iterations can be uh, quite small. Actually, like this number, like 16 times log n or epsilon squared uh, surfaces. So this is actually quite good. And actually, in our quantum algorithm, we didn't focus on uh, improving this number of iterations because this uh, capital T uh, is already quite small. So we didn't focus on that too much. So what we have been focusing on for this um, whole algorithm framework is that we want to, uh, first we want to fi uh, find a valid constraint in SDP faster than classical computers. And for the second step is that in general, we want to uh, give a, a better way to prepare for the density matrices. And in particular, in this case, uh, such kind of matrix form is called a Gibbs state, which is like the thermal state of, uh, of, the Hamil of a, a specific Hamiltonian system. Yes, and actually, I'm probably not go, due to the time limitation, I'm not going to talk about too much for this, uh, but this is a very typical problem in quantum algorithm and such state can be prepared in, in roughly spin cost of uh, square root of n, where n is the dimension of the state. And I think another thing that I want to highlight is that to, uh, we, we have to find a well-related constraint. So uh, what, what really resembles like finding a well-related constraint? So this is just like the Grover search. And in particular, in, in this paper, uh, we give uh, like a lifted version of the Grover search called a, a quantum OR lemma. So what do, uh, do we mean by that? So the Grover search is really like a scalar problem. You have like zeros, you have ones, and you want to figure out the ones. But here it is really like, a, roughly speaking, like an operator version of the, the Grover search because we have like a density matrices and also a mer a projectors. So we, we consider such kind of situation where we have a bunch of pro, uh, projectors, we have uh, M projectors, and we are given the promise that either the uh, trajectory uh, of, or either the input state uh, uh, compared, like uh, measured by one of the projector has a very large uh, uh, success probability, or uh, all of them has very small success probability. So you want to distinguish between these two situations. So for this specific kind of uh, like operator version of the Grover search, we can also uh, uh, solve the problem with only roughly speaking like square root of i uh, 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 operations. So as I, as I just mentioned, this is like an operator version of the Grover search. And this is actually crucial for decoupling the, the previous results. I mean, the previous results due to Brandon and Swar, and also the result due to an airport and all that they only have like quantum algorithm with bound square root of n times square root of n. And this is actually too large. And actually after, only after using such kind of quantum or lemma, like a lifted version of the Grover search, we can give a, a much faster quantum algorithm. So I think this is probably uh, pretty much about what I want to uh, uh, say today for quantum uh, algorithm for semi-definite programs. I guess my time is quite limited. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry if this is getting too fast, but I think uh, actually I want to give some highlight about uh, where in general universal quantum algorithms can go. So like the semi-definite program is a very specific um, uh, uh, application. I mean, it's, it's like a very, a typical theoretical computer science problem. And from an algorithmic perspective, this is very helpful. But uh, how about the application side? So actually a very natural question is that, can in general this framework be applied to solving some uh, machine learning problems? So this is actually what I want to shed light on uh, in the rest of my talk. So from a very high level perspective, this kind of like the, the matrix multiplicative weight method is actually very similar to uh, playing games. So uh, you see like this algorithm framework, we uh, have to update the weight for the problem and there are something well related, something you don't want to see. And I think you need to update the corresponding weight according to the answer of the previous rounds. So in general, I think this kind of algorithmic framework is good at solving such kind of minimax optimization problem where we have a specific function f 
uh, with uh, uh, two inputs, X and Y. And for the X side, we want to minimize that. And for the Y side, we want to maximize that. And needless to say, this is also super important, actually, uh, it appears not only in game theory, but also in, for instance, economics, operations research, uh, deep learning. And I think, for instance, like uh, in adversarial uh, uh, learning, like, I mean, for instance, like Professor Dong Lian Deng is actually doing and also introducing the earlier session of the talk, uh, etc. So a very basic case, I mean, the, the minimax uh, problem is, is just like a, a, a very wide problem. And I think maybe we want to uh, begin with some basic case. So a very uh, important basic case is called a bilinear minimax game. And this is very simple, but bilinear, it means that it is linear both uh, for the input X and also for the input Y here. And for such kind of bilinear matrix game, it is also a minimax game. It is also known as the matrix game. So for such kind of problem, maybe we have like a matrix uh, a, which is an N by D matrix. So it's, it's just like both parameters N and D typically represents four dimensions. So I just like choose uh, two different letters here. So we have the X to be uh, uh, in some uh, uh, input set uh, X here and also Y is from some input set uh, Y here. So we consider such kind of matrix game problem. And actually this is also a very important problem because it is, uh, for instance, contained in algorithm design because this is, this is actually just equivalent to linear programs. And also in machine learning, uh, it actually uh, contains a linear classification problem as a special case, etc. And actually it is a folklore result that the matrix game can be solved in linear time, I mean, roughly speaking, O of n times d. And a, a very important question is that uh, can matrix game be solved in sublinear time? So this is a question not only valid in, I mean, uh, uh, this is a session for quantum computing, but actually this is a question that in general for computer, I mean, we can first ask like whether a uh, matrix scan can be solved uh, faster, I mean, solved in sublinear time on classical computer. And the answer is actually, um, there are some uh, affirmative answers to that. So previously there are some classical algorithm for solving the matrix game. And for instance, like if uh, for the special case where both the, the input set X and Y, they are uh, very nicely designed. For instance, if they are L1 norm uh, unit boss, it is known that the problem can really be solved in uh, some linear time. I mean, a classical computer like with cost like N plus D over epsilon squared, roughly speaking. And also it works for the case where X is an L2 norm, a metric and also the Y is an L1 norm metric. It can also be solved in like N plus D over epsilon square time. So two main question is that can quantum algorithms solve the matrix uh, game, such kind of uh, problem faster? And also uh, how about like general matrix game in other metrics? Because as you can see, like the L1 norm, L2 norm, et cetera, they are just like so, so special metrics and maybe we want to be uh, more powerful on this. So we basically answer these questions affirmatively. So for the first contribution, we give a classical sublinear for general matrix games that actually works for a general matrix. So uh, in, instead of like uh, talking about only L1, L2 norm, so we, uh, we have to admit that we uh, need to still uh, assume that well, of the, the metric is an L1 metric, but the other, uh, we can have a lot of freedom. So in general, we can work for like the LQ or maybe LP kind of um, a metric. So for such kind of uh, optimization problem, we uh, basically define the parameter Q to be smaller than two, and also the parameter P here is larger than two. So for solving such kind of uh, matrix game, uh, we have basically the complexity bound is like N plus D times P over epsilon squared. So uh, using the previously mentioned MMW framework, we, we achieve this. So this bound is actually near optimal as in our work, we prove that there is a, a basically a matching, a classical lower bound in, in M plus D. So the core idea is that uh, we uh, follow a little bit on this classical work uh, using the L2, L1 matrix scheme uh, uh, due to a previous work uh, by Clarkson et al, I think in, in previously, maybe us, maybe Stock uh, 2010 conference or maybe 2011 conference. So follow a previous uh, Stock paper. And actually we share some similarity because for uh, both the, the dual problem, we use the matrix multiplicity weight method, but we have a lot of different designs for the, for the primal part because for the primal part, uh, the, the matrix is different. So we use some uh, uh, a different version for, uh, we use like a more advanced version for the iteration. So in the iteration, in the iteration for the uh, uh, primal part, we use uh, a method called the mirror descent. And this is like LP version due to the previous work of uh, Shalav Shivaz. And, and roughly speaking, I think, yeah, this is really roughly speaking because there are some uh, 
uh, technical details that I don't have time to cover. But this is basically interpolation between the L1 L1 and, and the L2 L1 and matrix games and with uh, uh, non-trivial technical contributions in the primal uh, dual approach. So the next question is about how about the quantum speed up? Because I think this is um, uh, the session for quantum computing. So maybe let, let me also tell a little bit uh, more about quantum algorithms. So for quantum algorithm for solving such kind of general matrix schemes, we uh, basically the statement of the, 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 the theorem is the same as the classical counterpart. And the only difference is that for quantum computer, we have a much better bound in terms of the, the two dimension uh, parameters. I mean, we basically achieve like square root of n and also square root of d. But unfortunately, in terms of the, the, the metric parameter, I mean, the p here, uh, we have a slightly larger um, uh, dependence here that we uh, which is not that nice. But nevertheless, we know that the quantum for this problem, the uh, in terms of the parameters n and d, uh, the qu uh, quantum lower bound is square root of n plus square root of d. So for these two parameters, these um, bounds are optimal. So a highlight of our quantum algorithm. So yeah, I guess this is probably um, uh, like uh, maybe uh, very briefly to introduce the input. So the input of our quantum algorithm, we assume the coherent access. So this is actually quite similar uh, to the SDP, so the input, uh, quantum input of the SDP algorithm. So basically we need to assume coherent access to the coordinates of the data. And, uh, but actually for the output set, this problem is very good in the sense that the output is just classical and, and we don't have like some fancy assumption. For instance, like in the quantum HHL algorithm, the output is a quantum state, uh, which is a little bit hard to utilize in practice. But our work, uh, for our work, our output is just classical. So this is suitable for end-to-end -end machine learning applications. And speaking of the speed up, and I think as, as I just mentioned, this is like uh, following the MMW framework. So for the primal part, exactly that. And for the dual part, we uh, basically use this kind of online gradient descent, and also a mirror descent. And yeah, quantum is just like we have for both the primal part and dual part. Uh, we have, uh, uh, this is really inspired from the semi-definite program work. Uh, we have some good uh, uh, ways to achieve some qu quantum quadratic speed up uh, for both uh, the primal and the dual parts. Yeah, so I'm probably not, yeah, but the technically it's basically by adopting the matrix multiplicity weight framework and uh, as well as a new quantum algorithm for LP sampling of quantum states. So yeah, and also on our work, we have optimality that basically we show uh, quantum lower bounds in terms of like square root of them plus square root of, square root of the meaning that our quantum algorithms are optimal. Yeah, so I think uh, the, the talk today is really covering a lot of topics. I mean, from the algorithm side about semi-definite programs, then move to machine learning uh, for solving uh, general matrix games. Yeah, let me also very briefly talk about two applications. So this is a problem called the approximate current theory problem, which is one in uh, 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 computational geometry. So the problem is that we have a, a high dimensional Euclidean space and we have a, a, a bunch of points. So we assume that there is a, of course, there, there is going to be a convex hull of these, of these points. So we want to have some representations about the points inside the convex hull. So in general, we know that points inside a convex hull of points uh, can be uh, represented by like a linear combination of the points. So for instance, like the point U here, it definitely going to be a linear combination of all the points. But this is in general too heavy for a real application in convex geometry. So maybe we want to, uh, instead, maybe for instance, maybe you're more happy to see like a point U prime here. Is it actually the linear combination of only two points here? I mean, the, the V2 and V8 here. So the goal here is that we want to find approximate current theory, uh, 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 this kind of uh, linear representation with much fewer uh, points. I mean, we only, for the, for the parameter K here on the right-hand side, we really want to make sure that this can be something small. And actually in our work, we show that even not in like, a, like the L2 version of the Euclidean space, but in general for the LP metric, we can show that the K here can be something like a P over epsilon squared uh, surfaces for solving the uh, approximate current theory problem. And for the running time is same, uh, same compared to the uh, previously results. I mean, classically like N plus uh, D times P over epsilon squared or quantum like square root of N plus square root of D over uh, uh, like times a poly one or epsilon. Yeah, and actually this is the first sublinear time for this uh, uh, very important uh, computational geometry problem. 
And also this can be applied to, for instance, like uh, like uh, LP version of the support vector machine. So basically, uh, uh, like previously, a lot of support vector machines, they are for using like L1, L2 norm, but we can actually, in general, for the LP no uh, version of the support vector machine, uh, we can do the problem with, uh, roughly speaking, the same complexity bounds here. So I guess this is basically the end of my talk. and. Uh, Maybe it's uh, getting a little bit fast, but let me give a summary here uh, uh, to talk about um, uh, the results here. So you see like this, there is like a clear line between what we have been working on that we first focus on the problem of some, uh, such kind of semi-definite programs and the algorithm have complexity like squared of m uh, plus squared of n uh, 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 times uh, uh, gamma times like uh, another uh, a sparse parameter and also like gamma to the fourth power. So this is a bound that is better than the classical algorithm in the parameters m n as well as the condition number gamma here. And we then basically, the algorithm basically used the multi multiplicative weight framework. We actually apply this framework also to solve some general matrix game in this kind of pattern. And for such kind of matrix game, we can in general uh, consider a problem in a general like LP and LQ metric. And we give uh, a fast, uh, not only a fast uh, quantum algorithm, but also a fast classical algorithm. And for the problem like the uh, approximate current theory problem, as well as the LP version of support vector machine, we basically achieve the first sublinear time uh, algorithm, both classically and quantumly. So this is the end of my talk, and thank you for your attention. Uh, thanks, Tongyang, for the very nice talk. Any questions? Uh, let me ask a question. Sure. So uh, you mentioned that uh, both SDP and also the Vmax uh, problem. So can this method generalize to uh, general uh, quadratic form optimization? Uh, sorry, what kind of form? Uh, quadratic form. Oh, quadratic form optimization yeah. problem. Yeah, that's a very good question. Yeah, I don't know. I think I think there are definitely some kind of quadratic form optimization problem that can be solved fast. And actually, yeah, there's another line, for instance, using quantum annealing method. I mean, okay. in the D wave machine, there are some good algorithms, yeah, but yeah. we need to be a little bit cautious because we need to be careful about what kind of inputs that we are given for quadratic forms. Mm -hmm. But I think this is a very nice question. Maybe we can think about this offline, but yeah, there are def I, I think there are definitely going to be some positive answers for that. Good. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh yes. yeah, so, maybe you can. <laughs> sure, yeah, let me take a look. Yeah, yeah. So can you explain a little bit on how to get a slower bound result for quantum algorithm? Yes. So as you can see that the quantum lower bound are mainly like squared of something. So basically we make some reductions to the Grover search. As we all know that the Grover search problem has lower bound in terms of a square root of the, square root of the dimension. So we want to be a little bit cautious that we, in our algorithm, we might make reductions. I want to make sure uh, that using some reduction, we at least uh, need to solve like a Grover search problem in this uh, dimension. I mean, we have like different dimension parameters like N and D here. So basically we have to both solve like a Grover search problem in N as well as D. So that makes uh, actually uh, makes the reason why we have to show like a square root of N plus square root of D quantum lower bound here. And the detailed reduction, you can uh, check out our paper. And if you have any questions, just feel free to ask me.